Hey everybody, welcome to the gardens at Mountain Jewel. It's been a little minute since I've made a video, but the weather broke today and the gardens are just looking so beautiful. Here I am with this gorgeous anise hyssop which attracts all of the pollinators. You can see a cosmos behind me and there is a goji in flower for the first time and already setting fruit. I made it a goal to plant a lot of flowers this year. I wanted a lot of beauty and ease in the gardens because we are building a house so there's already a lot of work. This bed is full of the Persian carpet zinnia and it had a lot of calendula in it which I have a lot of pictures of but the calendula is now going to seed. We also had purslane in here which we've been eating all summer long. It's really high in omega-3s and just a hearty green that you can eat all summer in the highest of heats. And of course Tulsi has made her way here. The Tulsi resows all over the garden and this um, beer bottle cold frame is no exception. Here we have a bed you might remember from last year. We planted Jerusalem artichokes, which are towering and in competition with this wild plum that we planted three years ago. So three years of growth and the first year of growth. And if you come this way, you can see the wild false indigos, which we use as a chop and drop species, are just doing awesome. And if you come in a little further, you're going to see our gumi plant in its third year of growth. Had a lot of fruit this year and it's doing very well. I also decided to plant a lot of sunflowers this year and some of the heads are so heavy they're falling over and you can spy them beyond the beans over there. My favorite sunflower of the year is this Japanese variety. You can see this bee is really loving it as well. This is called Taiyo and it's from Baker Creek. Look at all that pollen. I love it. Here we have a bit of a riot of winter squash growth in and amongst perennials. In the background we got some two different kinds of elders. We got a hybrid Asian and American persimmon. We got a row of asparagus and just a lot of lush vine growth. And I haven't watered these once and I haven't even visited to check squash bugs. So they're doing pretty well. Lost a lot of squash but these guys look pretty happy. And we got a lot of black raspberries from these vines. It was our first year really getting a lot of fruit. Um, so they have since gone to flower and set fruit and we ate them all and put some in the freezer. And we had another, here's more squash, and a pawpaw looking very lush. This was a wild pawpaw on our land. Um, these black raspberries also had a lot of fruit this year. Here we have a boysenberry, which happens to be the most vigorous caning fruit on our land. This is a hybrid between raspberry and blackberry. And as you see, a lot of it's coming to ripening. And it is just happy as can all be right here. We gotta vine these out once the fruit's done, but soon enough. If you come this way, you can also see more Jerusalem artichokes over there. And this super hardy thornless blackberry, which we've already gotten all the fruit off of. Look at all that new growth. He needed this awesome thing and put it on a cattle panel and it really loved that. In our um, intensive beds, we have skirret, also known as crumok, which is a perennial tasting somewhere between a carrot and a parsnip. We have Apios Americana over there as well, and leeks, and a huge flowering burdock. And then of course the wall of beans. And in these beds, we have Tulsi, and actually tiger nut, a sedge that produces a an edible tuber. And these beds kind of got away from us. There's some cinnamon basil, and some um, regular types of basil. And then of course more butterflies, more zinnias. I had a lot of chamomile in this bed and the chamomile has started to go to seed, but it's super lovely. I, as I said, focused on flowers this year and a lot of ground cherries. So they are ripening and we like to check under, to see what's going ripe under there. I also wanted to make a lavender bed this year. 
We don't often do monocrop, but I felt really inspired to have just like a little patch of lavender. And I'm really happy how it's filling in. Right here we got a row of chard, which has been kicking it for a couple months. And the last of the potatoes, which are dying off, we'll harvest them soon enough, but we have not touched those since the day we planted them. So we're really happy with that level of production. These are a really exciting new plant for me. These are a type of thornless blackberries that are not only erect, but primocane, meaning they fruit on this year's growth. So we're really excited to expand our caning fruit collection. Lastly, we'll talk a little bit about the high tunnel. So this was a wall of cucumbers that have since started declining. Uh, we've got a lot of cayenne peppers on and tomatoes fruiting. We've planted out some figs. I think you guys saw a little video on that. And then there's a ton of okra over there with beans trellising on it and a little chayote squash from Birds in Paradise, my mom. In our smaller high tunnel, we've decided to do sweet potatoes, and they are doing great. Here's a look at some of our seedling pawpaws that we started this spring. They're looking good, showing promise, and we're excited to really start producing a lot more of this delicious fruit. Here's a beautiful cluster of our first crop of elderberries. This is a Bob Gordon variety, and we are really happy with how this thing is filling out. As always, we got a lot going on, a lot growing, and we're happy you stopped by. Thanks for watching. See you next time.